Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So, uh, Salome, uh, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything that you've done, Father God. We give you glory, honor, and praise, of Father God. God, this morning I pray, Father God, for you to lead, Father. Everything that Pastor says, God, you lead him and you speak through him, oh Father God, and everyone be touched, oh Father God, and help us to learn, oh Lord God, what you want us to what us to learn, oh Father. Thank you, Jesus, and Jesus, my name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Salome. All right. So uh last week we completed on uh, chapter seven. Uh we looked at innovation and creativity and how important it is to be uh, you know, innovative, creative and Remember that God is our source of wisdom. We saw how God gave wisdom to, uh, you know, uh, David. He gave wisdom to uh, the the two of the two people in the book of uh, Exodus, where uh, Bezalel and Belial were. Uh, you know, they were. God gave them the wisdom to make these crafty uh, art and craft and uh, for the dress on the high priest and uh, so. What we concluded on that chapter is innovation and creativity comes from God. Uh, uh, and so we need to open ourselves and ask the Lord to give us uh, new ideas and new strategies. All right, we'll move to chapter eight uh, this morning. We'll go into some of the practical things. Now, we know that the scripture teaches us not only about you know, uh, only the spiritual aspects, but there's a lot of practical things that the Bible teaches us. Right? Proverbs is a whole book which uh, has a lot of practical, uh, you know, implementations that we can uh, use in our lives. So let's look at chapter eight, people, processes, performance and rewards. Now we'll go a little quick because we have a lot to cover. So I may not go through every verse uh, but we'll see what is important and we'll uh, uh, go from there so people processes performance and rewards now remember that a ministry or an organization is all about people right so if we don't have people there's no ministry uh and and if there's no people there's no business there's no organization people are the core of a business or a ministry, right? Uh, and so that's why there's something called as human resource management, where we uh, there's a department called the HR where they uh, look at employee motivation, uh, resolving conflicts, performance evaluation, employee rewards, uh, and and it may sound like okay, these are not so important, but it's very very important, right? Because the people whom you serve in an organization or the people in an organization is what makes an organization right so we need to make sure and that our 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 employees and our people in the organization are are you know comfortable they they enjoy working uh, and, and so we will look at uh, some fundamental principles on how what the bible teaches us about people and you know especially when it comes to employer and employee boss and uh, you know uh, uh, employees uh, how, what does the bible teach us right uh, so we look at a few of that now in a time when you know work from home is something that is you know so prevalent uh, you can sit in one nation and work for another nation right so it doesn't really matter and so people working remotely. Now, this is a challenge, especially for HR, uh, human resource management, for that team. It's going to be a challenge because they cannot get people together. There's, you know, processes cannot always be put in place, performance and rewards, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. But anyways, let's look at what God teaches us uh, from scripture on how we are to treat people how we are to treat processes, performance, and how we are to reward people uh, that work for us, right? So let's look at a few points there. First one, pay fairly based on contribution and value to the organization. Colossians chapter four, verse one. 
Masters, give your born servants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Now, Paul is writing this, right? He's saying, Masters, give your born servants what is just and fair. Now, we know that the Apostle Paul also worked. He was a tent maker. He probably would have been on his own or probably he would have also worked under uh, a, a few masters. We don't know about that. But he says here, give your bond servants what is uh, just and fair. So what do we mean by just and fair? Just and fair simply means what a, a person can bring to the table or what a person or an employee can uh, bring to the organization, right? What are the skills they have? Uh, now, just to make an understanding, in an organization, we'll have people who are more skilled and give, bring more to the organization. And then we have people who are you know, still learning. Uh, they may be young, they're still learning, uh, and they're still developing their skills. Now, we know that you know, the remuneration for both of them is not going to be the same. Why? Because this person, person A, is able to bring more uh, to the company, to the organization. Uh, and this person needs some time, right? So as long as there's a good understanding between the employer and the employee, see, the reason I am paying you so much is because this is what you can offer. But as you grow, as you develop yourself, this is what we can do. Now, Certain companies or certain organizations, you know, we always have this, especially in our nation of India, you know, they look at work experience, right? Uh, uh, okay, you have 10 years of work experience. Okay, I'm going to give you this. Now, it's not entirely right. Yes, work experience does count. But a person can be 10 years in a workplace, 10 years of work experience, and not be able to give his full potential to a company. Whereas a person who's just two, three years can give more than what a person gives for 10 years. So it's not always, okay, 10 years in this industry, so I should get paid more. Uh, uh, especially, you know, uh, you know, we are working in an organization or you're planning to start an organization, never permit the feeling of entitlement to set in, right? What is entitlement? You know, it's a feeling that, hey, I am the best. I know how to do this. And I think I can do this the best. And so I am entitled to have all these benefits. Right now, when that comes in, uh, entitlement, people, uh, you know, it, it fosters lethargy. It impairs performance. It demoralizes people. Right. So, for example, if there is, uh, you know, if there is somebody in, let's, you know, uh, look at ministry, right? So if there's somebody who is uh, a pastor in the church, right? Uh, he's a pioneer. And they have children. And we've seen this in many places. And maybe their son, the pastor's son, they don't know anything on the scriptures. Right? They just know a few things. And all of a sudden, they are preaching. Now, why, why does that happen? Because there's a feeling of entitlement. I'm the pastor's father, uh, pa pastor's son. So then I will become the next, you know, I have to take on the next response. No, not so. Right? Same thing in an organization. We may be the boss's son or daughter, uh, uh, but it doesn't entitle us to, you know, just come and sit in a position. Please remember that it is what we can bring to the organization. Right. Uh, I have seen many, many and heard many ministries where uh, pastors, very genuine, have, you know, in a hurry, they've given their, uh, you know, son to take over the ministry. And instead of the ministry growing, it just went uh, into trouble. And, you know, there was lack of wisdom in the, in the way the things were functioning in the ministry. And he went into a lot of problems. Uh, so this this whole thing of entitlement should be removed, both in the corporate sector, in the ministry as well. Right? Uh, we work, we serve, and 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 according to what we serve, uh, our uh, you know our employers or our bosses pay us accordingly. Two, ensure people are paid on time. 
let's read Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 13. Let's read that. Leviticus 19 and verse 13. Is any one of us? Pastor, am I audible? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Avinas. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let, uh, let's read. Leviticus 19, 13. Do not rob or take advantage of anyone. Do not hold back the wages of someone you have hired, not even for one night. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avinas. Now, this is in the book of Leviticus. That is, you know, just when people began to deal, when God began to deal with the people of Israel, he brought them out of Egypt uh, and he's setting things, you know, for the nation uh, of Israel. And that time itself, very clearly, God is saying, people, don't hold, do not rob, take advantage of anyone, do not hold back wages, someone you have hired, not even for a night. Now, this is so clear, right? Now, there will be times, right? Uh, of course, a lot of organizations pay on a monthly cycle. There are some that pay fortnightly, some pay, uh, you know, over uh, one week, or uh, some of them pay hourly basis. So whatever it is, uh, the Bible instructs us to pay our wages on time to the people you have hired. Right? Now, we may not be bosses in a company. If we are, please follow this. But if we are not, there will be areas in our life where we will be, you know, uh, probably helpers or people who are vendors who are helping us in our business or uh, vendors who are helping out in the ministry, whoever they are. Do not hold back wages from the people we have hired. Because the Bible teaches us, if we go on to Deuteronomy 24, 14 and 15, it says, I'll read that, Deuteronomy 24, 14 and 15, do not cheat poor and needy hired servants, whether, whether they are Israelites or foreigners living in one of your own towns. Each day before sunset, pay them for the day's work. They need the money and have counted on getting on getting it. If you do not pay them, they will cry out against the Lord. And this part is, you know, and you will be guilty of sin. Now, of course, we don't pay on a daily basis. But what he's trying to bring out is uh, if you do not pay them on time, it's a sin against God. It's, it, God looks at it as a sin. Right. So even as you know, some of the things that we follow as a church in APC is we have a lot of vendors, right? Vendors who, you know, uh, uh, coffee and coffee vendors, food vendors, uh, people who come and uh, help us during some uh, productions, some recordings and a lot of lot of, uh, you know, a lot of vendors uh, that we have. Uh, but one of the things that we do is as soon as we receive the bill, um, you know, we take a scanned copy of the bill, email it to the accounts team, and the accounts team sends the money on the same day. The confirmation is sent to the uh, to the person uh, who who emailed the bill, and that person can either email it to the vendors or WhatsApp it to the vendors, and and so on the same day, the whatever has been you know uh, uh, used or whatever has been uh, we have taken from, you know, uh, facilities that we have used, it is paid on the same day. Uh, and why do we do this? Because we want to stay right before God. Because people are dependent on this, right? Uh, now, for example, you got, you know, here in Mangalore, we've got, uh, you know, you know, coffee vendors, we got food vendors. And uh, uh, yesterday we had uh, lunch after church. And so what we did is we got the bill, we email it, we send it, immediately the payment is made. Why? Because he has a family, he has children that he has to look after. And, you know, we can't withhold something which is theirs. And uh, uh, yes, there will be times, like as an organization, uh, funds are not there, uh, but we need to let our employees know, this is the, you know, travel, this is the problem that I'm going through, but, uh, in so and so date, I should be able to make your payments. Now, informing them is all right, but if there is no good reason and we withhold what belongs to somebody else, we are 
uh, we are this is not acceptable in god's eyes we have to give what belongs to the others right uh, you know sometimes we we do something where i've, I've heard of uh, uh, you know a christian event that happened not in our nation not in uh, bangalore but in another city so these christian uh, organized two three organizations came together they said we'll have this whole evangelistic meeting and they called some of the good vendors and they came they put up the st stage and lightings and uh, you know all the sound system everything everything was already discussed before and so after the whole uh, event they expected more people to come but uh, the number of people who turned up was very less so what happened was they they began to tell the vendors that, you know, uh, uh, this was not good. That was not good. This was not done on time. Uh, it was not up to the mark. And, uh, you know, these are the problems that we face. So we cannot pay you what we have told you. Uh, we'll, we'll have to sit and make, you'll have to give us a discount and all of that. And uh, the vendors are very discouraged uh, with the way that things went on. And how I know this was because one of the believers in that, uh, whole meeting who was part of the team felt very bad uh, with what happened because these guys are hard working guys coming and you know it's hard labor physical labor and uh, you know uh, they felt really bad uh, some of them in the team and they asked me what is it is it right I said no of course it's not right uh, what has already been discussed uh, we have to pay the people uh, who have served us uh, and pay them on time as well third one don't exploit people. Don't hold back their wages. The same thing. God forbids us from exploiting, cheating employees. Uh, what is theirs is theirs. Never exploit, fourth one, never exploit the poor and the powerless. Let's read Deuteronomy 24 and verse 14. Deuteronomy 24 and verse 14. Yes, go ahead. Anybody? Uh, Deuteronomy 24 and verse 14. Is anyone's there? A anyone can read? Yes, Pastor, I can read. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 40. Uh, do not cheat poor. Um, and needy hired servants, whether they are Israelites or foreigners, living in one of your own towns. Yep. Thank you, Prabhakar. So, what does it say? You shall not oppress hired servants who are poor and needy, whether it's one of your brethren or whether they are aliens from another land, meaning they may be part of, uh, you know, uh, they believe in God, they, they believe in God, uh, of Israel or they don't believe they are people who don't win, fall under your uh, religious sec section but do not oppress hired servants now one of the dangers that uh, we see is especially with employers right people who are wealthy is the tendency to oppress the poor right it, it just comes I'm not saying everyone but that's the tendency right because these people are meager workers now when you look at deuteronomy what was what was happening was the people of um, israel were had gone into the promised land and there was so much of land so they hired people they said you come work in this land you come work in this land uh, and whatever crops come you can you know uh, take some of it we will pay you for wages so the israelites began to hire people to work for them now we must remember that the poor people who are or people who are working for you are dependent on what you know uh, on the on the money that they need for their for their uh, home expenses and for the things that they uh, have to do uh, throughout the day or throughout the month and and god is saying here do not oppress when we take advantage of the helpless people right uh, whether in ministry or organization remember it is oppression and god's instruction is we should not oppress people right we should not exploit the poor and the needy another point that we can look at is 
in an organization is to hire right, retain and review people. Right, uh, Proverbs 26 and verse 10. Let's, uh, let's read that, one of us. Proverbs 26 and verse 10. Yes, Proverbs 26 and verse 10. Can anyone read? So, Pastor. Go ahead. An employer who hires any fool that comes along is only hurting everybody concerned. Yeah, thank you, Pratik. Now, it says here, what does it mean? An employer who hires any fool that comes along is hurting everybody concerned. That means a person, an employer, we must hire carefully because who we hire will affect the organization, right? So have a sound recruiting process. Now, for example, uh, uh, say you are in a team in the church, right? You're, you're handling a, a sound and set up team, right? Let's take that example. Now, just because the person is strong and he looks like he can carry speakers and you know he's a active guy, doesn't mean you have we have to hire him. We have to look at character. We have to look at whether he is aligned to the will of God, aligned to the uh, vision of the church. Uh, now, why is that important? He's just going to carry speakers and carry wires and cables and set it up. Why is it that he should be aligned to the vision? Because this one person, if he does not walk in good character and if he's somebody who's always uh, troublesome, causing trouble, uh, causing strife or jealousy, enmity between people, he, this one person can cause confusion in the entire team, right? So even before you hire people or recruit people in your team, make sure that you, you know, you teach them the vision, the values, that you follow as a team or as an organization, right? There will be people who will be very skilled in what they are doing and they're doing well also in the team or in the organization. Keep them, retain them, uh, do everything that you can to, uh, you know, to help them to grow in the organization. Now, there will be times people will want to leave an organization, go to another organization. We cannot uh, stop them. We cannot control that. Uh, but a good thing to do is have exit interviews now, some of the things that we do in uh, in apc is for example if somebody wants to uh, leave a team uh, we don't just say okay now you want to leave all right it's all right you can leave now what we do is we sit with the person we ask them okay uh, what is it is it you know most of the times it's you know work and commitments at work or uh, family pressure and unable to give their best uh, for church but it's good to always sit and have an you know uh, an open honest interview right it's called an exit interview we used to do that uh, many many years ago in id companies i don't know if they do it now uh, but uh, but what what is important is when we do that we get to know uh, okay these are areas where i can improve as an organization or these are areas where i can improve as a team uh, and and so we can also do this uh, having a exit interview but here's the thing hire right right meaning don't just take in people in your team just because they are there doing nothing don't do that right uh, jesus when he chose the 12 disciples he didn't choose people who were just sitting around on the streets in jerusalem doing nothing no no almost everyone that he chose were people who are working right uh, people who had an understanding that they had to work and earn for their families and uh, support themselves and so when you hire people in your team you may be a team leader in the church as well right uh, you may be just 100 people in your church but hire the right people sit with them talk to them let them understand where they're coming from why do they want to join the team is it because they just want to be in some team or is it because they want to, you know, uh, uh, be uh, that people should recognize them or is it because they want to do something for the body of Christ? So 
hire the right people. One person in a team who is not, uh, you know, in line with the vision can cause havoc in, in a team. So uh, always remember this. Next one, treat people the way you like to be treated. Now, Jesus himself taught us this very clearly. Uh, let's read Luke chapter 6, verse 31 and verse 36. Luke 6, 31 and verse 36. Luke 6, 31, 36. Do for others just what you want them to do for you. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abhinas. Now, this is a simple principle that the Lord Jesus taught us. Right? Do for others what you want, what you like others do for you. How would how would I feel as an employee or part of a team in an in in a church or in an organization? How would I like to be treated? Or if I had a problem, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, and, and this is a problem uh, in the organization that I'm facing. How would you like the my managers or my team leaders to uh, consider the situation and assist us, right? Uh, so treat others how you would like others to treat you. Uh, Jesus himself taught us this. Jesus himself said, when you treat others uh, with respect, you also, you know, uh, uh, will get that respect. If you, as a you and I, as a as a leader, are always gossiping and you know uh, rude to your team members, what is going to happen? Your team members is not going to respect you, right? Now, also we must remember that this is a reciprocating relationship. Uh, when when you know uh, when we like to treat our employees in a good way, the employees also must be willing to give hundred percent to the organization. Now, it would be wrong if the employee says, hey, anyways, my team leader is a very good guy. You know, he's always understanding me or my manager is very good. He'll give me all the leaves that I want. So it's all right. Uh, I can just call in sick or I can call in, I can go for a vacation whenever I want to. Uh, that would be wrong, uh, right? It would be wrong for the employee to keep showing, you know, expecting goodness and mercy upon him. Uh, and then just doing whatever they want. No, there will be a place, there will be a time when we will have to warn, we'll have to uh, give them uh, stern warnings uh, to make sure that, you know, we are doing our part of treating you the right way, but we don't see it coming back from your side. So we have to make some changes, right? Uh, yes, Kennedy has a question. What is your take on nepotism in a company? Okay. Um, Yes, Kennedy, there is going to be nepotism uh, in a company, uh, for so much so even in a church, uh, as I was mentioning. Uh, it's going to be there, right? Uh, uh, we can't stop it, right? But but there are times when, you know, companies have, you know, uh, 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 you know they, they feel that their children or their rel loved ones can, uh, are really equipped enough and they are taken on board just as a regular uh, employee. But then again, there is going to be nepotism any everywhere. It is it is wrong in the sense that, you know, uh, if they're not skilled and if they are not uh, equipped in the area that they are in, they cannot be in that position. Right? Like how I just mentioned. Uh, uh, so if there's, uh, let me take it uh, in the side of ministry, right? So if there's a pastor and the son hasn't even spent time, hasn't gone to a Bible college, hasn't spent time reading uh, the word, hasn't spent time, hasn't really, uh, you know, uh, received the Lord Jesus in the, as their personal savior because the whole life they've seen church and they've not really understood. Uh, just because they're the pastor's son doesn't mean they're going to preach next. They should be there next. Uh, again, it's all about skill and uh, your the way that you know for that position or that role that they are uh, that they that they are applying for they should be skilled in that area uh, so my take on nepotism would be uh, it, it it's going to be there right 
uh, everywhere, but uh, good leaders will, uh, you know, good organization, good leaders who really want to see the company do well, see the organization do well, see the ministry do well, will avoid nepotism and uh, look to equip people and uh, put them in right, hire them in right positions, uh, you know. So, for example, I can't have a, if I'm a CEO of a company, I can't have my son when he's 19 years old uh, say, okay, he's part of the, uh, you know, managing directors, he's part of the board. This guy may be just out of college, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of school and just, you know, out of college. He doesn't know anything about how to run an organization. And you put him in the board, it's going to, it's going to cause destruction, right? So, uh, uh, Kennedy, I hope that answers your question. I think it's more about skill and talent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, you know, the biggest hindrance in the hiring staff is normally tribalism and nepotism. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't. Get, I didn't get that, Kennedy. The, big, the biggest challenge in hiring staff is normally tribalism yeah. and nepotism. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You. yes, thank yes, you. that's true, that's true, that's true. Um, and so that's why even when we recruit, uh, you know, recruit and there's a HR process, uh, a HR team involved, it's, it's very important to have the right people in the team. So um, as a, as say, for example, I'm a CEO and I have a HR team. Now I must be fully convinced that my HR team is doing the right thing by hiring this person. Right. Uh, and if you feel that there's something going wrong, always get involved. Right. And uh, even in ministry, right, get involved in teams. It's not like you don't trust them. It's not like you don't have, uh, you know, you don't want to delegate responsibility, but it's just that, you know, sometimes you feel that it's good for you to step in, step in, share your views, share your points, share what you feel. And, uh, you know, you can, uh, that, that's good for the organization because you're looking at the organization as a whole. So, right. Uh, let's go to the next point. Warn, but never threaten or abuse. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 6, 8 and 9. Yes, any one of us? Ephesians chapter 6, 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 6, 8 and 9. Remember that the Lord will reward each of us, whether slave or free, for the good work we do. Masters, behave in the same way toward, toward your slaves and stop using threats. Remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven who judges everyone by the same standard. Amen. And thank you. Thank you, Abhina. See, the Apostle Paul is so wonderfully putting this here. He says, in the earthly, well, basically what he's trying to say is, in the earthly aspect, you have a master, you have a slave. But when you look at a bigger picture, these both are on the same ground because God is our boss. Or God is our employer, right? So just on earth, it's like this. You are the master and uh, there's a slave. But for God... God being the ultimate employer, we both the master and the slave are in you know are on one on, on the same level. So what does he say here? Just because you're a master, do not threaten your employees, do not abuse them. Uh, you know, yes, there will be times when we have to get people to, you know, perform in a company, perform in the organization, expectations are put, and then you say, okay, these are targets that we have to meet. Uh, and, and then uh, there will be times when we cannot reach those targets. There will be times, there will be different challenges that people go through and maybe targets are not reached. During that time, do not, you know, uh, threaten your uh, team and say inflict pain injury or damage in their minds uh, you know uh, because it's like you know taking retribution to something that they have done or not done uh, one one of the mistakes that we make is we can say if we don't uh, reach our target today this month there will be no salary now that is wrong it's like a threaten that you're threatening if you don't do it you know salary uh, uh, that's wrong in God's eyes. Remember, 
that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven who judges everyone as the same standard right so we must be very careful uh it may be a house help who comes home right uh, or, or a cook who comes home or somebody who's doing a small help in the church maybe a helper who washes the vessels uh, uh, in the church or in the ministry or somebody who just comes to clean the church every week never threaten them i would say if you don't come i will you know uh, throw you out of the job or uh, you know i'll not give you your salary you didn't do this job well never do that uh, that is abuse that's threatening uh, but we can just tell them we can warn them there will be times when you know uh, people in the team are just taking things for granted warn them you know some things uh, we believe in apc is the street three strike policy right and strike one is you make a mistake strike two is you make a mistake again uh, uh, strike one you get a warning letter strike two is uh, you know a second kind of a warning strike three is your uh, you're out of the organization right so three three strike policy and so why do we have this because yes it's a ministry yes you know god loves us and all all of that that's good but we also want to make sure that there are certain policies and we are all you know on the same ground all of us right so uh warn but don't threaten people don't abuse people of what they are doing right uh now some of us maybe uh you know in church ministries and teams we may be team leaders right uh, we are not to say okay if you don't do this then maybe next month onwards you can't be in the team that's a threat right yeah it's like you're threatening them if you don't do it if you don't serve in the church for the next one week uh see i you know i can't say i'm going on a holiday and so now you have to do all the work because i'm going on a holiday and then you can't threaten them by saying if you don't do it uh, next next month you won't be the team that is wrong right uh, there are ways to uh, handle people handle your team members and it's always good to be transparent with them tell them right uh, they can't understand everything uh, this is one very 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 important lesson that i learned um, in ministry is tell people what you you know what you expect because they they may not understand it you know they can't read minds people cannot read your mind people cannot read my mind so we have to tell them right if somebody does something wrong you can't make an angry face and stand and say okay i thought you saw my face last time i was upset so this is your next this is your final warning you're out of the team no you need to sit we need to sit with them talk to them warn them tell them these are the things that we are uh, that is that we are doing is affecting the organization it's affecting the team and so we want to make sure that uh, you know this does not happen so what we're doing is we are uh you know we can consider this as a first warning uh now there's nothing wrong in it it's not not unbiblical right it's not uh the bible teaches us to you know the lord jesus himself has has uh, you know taught his disciples and uh, apostle paul also saying here when they do good you bless them remember the parable of the uh, talents the boss gave them and what did he tell the last person i gave you something but you didn't do anything about it i gave you a coin the others uh, doubled it and they blessed and they were a blessing to me but you didn't do anything about it the boss was not happy about it right he 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 did tell him that you know uh, you haven't multiplied so uh, so it's not good what you have done so the same way it is all right as a leader as a boss as an employer to tell your team right uh, uh whether it's even a cell group you are you may be attending or you may be a cell group leader tell your team if you feel that there are people in your team that are causing strife causing things that are 
you know you know uh, within the cell group and it's and it's causing division or it's some kind of uneasiness in the group you need to uh, you know you need to look at that matter we cannot you know say okay it's okay it's ministry no yes there's mercy uh, but there's also uh, a way to deal with things right uh, and so even as we you know as as we continue serving in church and ministries or in the organization we will learn all this we will learn how to bring correction right uh, next point empower people for high performance right we learned that uh, uh, god there's a lot we can do uh, as we empower people uh, i just want to use these two examples one is the ant one is the locust now through nature god is teaching us very something very important in proverbs right it says uh, uh proverbs 6 6 says go to the ant you sluggard consider her ways and be wise which having no captain no overseer no ruler provides her supplies in summer and gathers her food in the harvest now this is a wonderful example that we can see if you see the ants they don't have a team leader they don't have a command center meaning okay you they don't have somebody standing there like the captain of the ants saying you go this way one go north one go south one go east no when it's when it's summer they know okay winter is going to come and they start working as a team they all come together they start making these i'm sure you've seen these ant hills right it, it's not going to it's not going to happen overnight or in two three days it takes a long time to make some of those ant hills and they all come together and and then some of them are building the house for their shelter during winter some of them are going and bringing food and storing it up for the uh, for the winter because they know during winter we cannot come out now who made them you know who made them to work together it's just teamwork what a wonderful amazing example god is teaching us here to, he's teaching us the power of teamwork, right? Now, the second example will be locusts. Now, locusts are very solitary, right? Uh, but in certain conditions, for example, when there's heavy rains or there's famine or drought uh, in the place, they swarm together, right? There's no leader, there's no captain, uh, and... Uh, and what no locust there's no uh, there's no you know person locust that's saying okay we will do this way no no all of them work together in an orderly manner uh and then when they do so there's great devastations remember the in the book of exodus the the whole uh, plague of locusts now they were not one or two locusts you know just coming and sitting in the palace no no there were swarms of locusts and and they they have great flexibility and and they they can you know a swarm of locusts can really just break into a wall they are so strong right uh and here god is teaching us that when there's unity when there's order when there's spontaneous teamwork the results can be amazing so we are to empower our team to do better empower our team for excellence now you and i may be uh, a, a team leader and when we are a team leader empower your team for excellence you say hey come on we can do better than this and uh, we've done a good job we can go on um, and 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 appreciate your team involve them tell take them to their maximum limits uh, you know even in ministry you you tell your you know i remember when we were offline as uh, bible college uh, when we were when we were going to teach offline uh, i would tell we would tell the students the teachers all of us the faculty would tell the students come on you have this assignment this assignment you got to do it these are things that you have to do we would send them out on street ministry in the afternoons all the students go out on street ministry some of them would say oh i've not no you go you can do it you can learn uh, and so we wanted them to really excel in in what the reason they came was to study and to do something in the ministry we wanted them to be excellent in that so pursue your team for that teach them the power of teamwork these two examples the ant and the locust working as a team spontaneity and they are able to do greater works 
together as a team. Remember, ninth point, the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Learning is, is, takes place in the best way is the best way that learning takes place is through positive encouraging. Right? You encourage your team members, you encourage your, uh, you know, if imagine for, for example, you know, you want to learn the guitar and then you go, you go for classes and imagine the teacher says you can never learn guitar. You, you know, you're not even able to play the G chord. How will you feel? Feel, hey, this guy is saying I can't even play the, a chord, so I better not learn the guitar. Right. But what if you have a teacher who says, oh, hey, it's, 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 it's nice. What you're playing is good. But, you know, as you practice a little more, you'll be able to do it this way. And, you know, and if you look at yourself two years from now, you will be able to play many songs. Right? The sweetness of the lips uh, increases learning. Right? I remember I went for uh, keyboard classes. And when I went, because I have a year for music, uh, you know, I started just playing a few things. And the teacher came and said, no, no, you should not play this. I said, no, I have a year for music, so I play. But then I will learn whatever you teach me. No, you should not play anything else other than what the next class I was not there. I never went. I knew that this is not the right teacher for me. Uh, and so sweetness of the lips increases learning. Be good. Be kind to your team members. Encourage them. Uh, and when you do so, they will be encouraged to learn more, right? Be supportive even when people make mistakes, right? Uh, uh, when people, you know, let's read Proverbs 19, 11. Smart people know how to hold their tongue. Their grandeur is to forgive and forget. All of us make mistakes. Now, people in organization especially, we make small mistakes, we make big mistakes. Now, me personally, I've made small mistakes, I've made big mistakes. I'm talking about in the ministry, right? I've made small mistakes, I've made big mistakes. Uh, uh, and there are some of my team members in my team who have made small mistakes, big mistakes. Now, part of providing a supportive organization uh, and encouraging environment is not to make a big deal out of people's mistakes. Don't hold on to their mistakes, right? Yes, there are people in, 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 you know, for example, in the church that I'm leading, there are people in the church who've made mistakes, right? And now we've used that as teachable moments. We've told them, see, this is why it's wrong. This is why what you did is can affect the whole church, can affect the people in the church. And so we began to encourage them. We told them, okay, uh, you look at other opportunities, pay, meaning uh, look at other ways that you can deal with this problem that you're going through uh, and then uh, pay attention to them, ask them what made them take that step, uh, set certain guidelines. And sometimes all they need is a little help, right? Just some guidance, some steps, right? And especially you'll find this in the ministry. Don't be somebody who... You know, uh, you know, so if somebody in your team makes mistake. Okay, this is a big mistake. You're out of the team. No, give them chances. Uh, make it teachable moments, and then don't hold on to it. Don't, for example, somebody made a mistake two years back, and then maybe after three, two years, they made another mistake. You don't say, "Oh, you made another mistake." Remember, two years back, you made a worse mistake. It was a bigger mistake. Now again, you don't do that. That is very, very, very wrong, right? Even when people make mistakes, be supportive. Remember the Lord Jesus. He's so gracious to us. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Now, God has been gracious to us. So we extend grace. Yet, if there is complacency, if there is indifference, if there's continual perf poor performance, if you feel that they are a... Uh, you know, they are just hurting the organization by being there. You feel that they are not improving themselves and their skills and abilities. Again, you can give them a warning. Then you can just show them the exit. Uh, why? Because it's beneficial for the organization. All right. Kennedy has a question here. Is it proper for men to be entitled for maternity leave as, as some say it affects performance okay that's a good question uh kennedy uh 
Now, nowadays, w from what I know is a few organizations, uh, especially IT companies and all that, understand that, you know, uh, you know, times have changed before you have a child, you, you know, your whole family comes and you know, you've got people to look after the child and all of that. But now people working remotely, husband and wife just staying together. Uh, and, and so it is all right for, and I know of companies that are providing uh, uh, leave for uh, men as well, because they know that, okay, the wife won't be able to, you know, after uh, nine months of labor and go, and all the pain, she would need about three, four months of rest and the wife will not be able to, uh, being a new mother will not be able to do things alone. So uh, companies do consider uh, giving paternity leave uh, to uh, to men. So it's not wrong. Uh, of course, it's not going to be like three months and uh, like what companies do for women, but uh, maybe 15 days, 10, 15 days. Uh, depends on the organization again. And this is new ground. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about companies. Uh, you know, I haven't been in the IT sector from 2012 onwards. So I'm not sure if uh, this is something that has come on paper. But uh, but I believe that there are some companies who are already providing paternity leave. Uh, but it depends on them again. So, yeah, there's nothing wrong about it. Okay. Uh, so we finished our time. Uh, uh, we'll close today. We'll continue tomorrow. Uh, we'll try to pick up from where we stopped. Uh, and then we'll also go to the next chapter, workplace relationships. All right. Thank you so much for, uh, for attending this class. Have a great day ahead. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you.